Hello students. As we continue to describe microorganisms, we started with bacteria and now we're going to talk about another group, which are the fungi. Well, I want you to uh, bear in mind and review with me that fungi, they are eukaryotic organisms. They have true nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. We're going to talk about what are the major, fu major structural uh, composition of fungi and how do they uh, uh, can be classified into the soil environment. So, to begin with, we know that it's uh, eukaryotic. It has a filamentous shape. They make thin tubular structures. They're called hyphae. So they're filaments. Uh, their cell wall is different, very different from the bacterial cell wall. In bacteria, they are usually peptidoglycans, but in fungi, they have polysaccharide type. They usually have two kinds of ribosomes, and the cells are often larger in size than the bacterial cell. What is important to note in fungi is that they have a structural diversity, rather than bacteria, which has a metabolic diversity. So structural diversity means that they have uh, different shapes and uh, a wide array of different uh, structures within their morphological uh, characteristics. So we often characterize fungi in regards to their morphology, but we can't do that only with bacteria because thousands of bacteria, they share four or five shapes only. And so uh, what, that's how fungi are well known for their structural diversity. This is the cell wall composition. It's usually made of cellulose and chitin, and they're usually uh, cellulose, as you can see here, it's a polymer of uh, glucose. And chitin is also another sugar con that contains nitrogen. We could see nitrogen containing sugars in here. So it's uh, um, the cell wall composition is a, quite different from that of bacteria. That's why we stain them a little bit differently. The structures, the major structures that fungi can do, first of all, is the hyphae. So the hyphae here is a thin tubular structure that elongates into the uh, soil environment. And then the mycelium, which is a group of hyphae together, a mass of hyphae is called the mycelium. And then uh, fungi are known for making spores. They use for reproduction. And what is special about those spores is that they could make those organisms, the fungi, resistant to drying and heating. So they became dormant within their spores until environmental factors are in their favor, then they start to grow. Um, so spores are their methods of dissemination to going to spread around different places, different locations, and then to protect the in, an organism, and they are often they use in reproduction. The fungi are uh, the second most important organisms in the food chain because many of them they have the ability to recycle carbon and other organic material they are the uh, degraders most of their feeding is either heterotrophic what that use carbon as energy source and they use organic carbon or saprophytic they utilize and degrade non-living organic material which are dead material of plants, dead material of animals. And some feeding uh, uh, characteristics of fungi, some they could be parasitic. They often rely on host cells to uh, obtain nutrients and food, and therefore this is a parasitic type of feed. They usually cause diseases in plants and animals. So that's the parasitic type of feeding. And mostly we are... We know fungi for their symbiotic relationship. We have two examples here. One here on the picture on top here, this is the lichens. These are the lichens. And you can see we have different types of lichens, the yellow, the red, and the white, and the gray. So these are different types of uh, um, cyanobacteria in association with the fungi. So these a symbiotic relationship between the algae and the fungi make them very strong that they can't live unless they are together. Another form is the mycorrhizae. 
The mycorrhizae is often associated between the fungus and the plant roots. Uh, there could be either ectomycorrhizae, they form all the hyphae are on, on, uh, on the borders here of the root, or some of the hyphae can penetrate the root cells and form an arbuscule structures within the root cells, and these are called the endomycorrhizae, and we will come to talk about them uh, uh, later on. So this is the symbiotic type of feeding. There's another form where uh, uh, fungi can be as predators. It is often not, it's not very often common fungus, but this fungus is called the nematode trapping fungi. Well, what it does do is that it has a hole, a tubular structure, it's like a tube, and that it traps nematodes inside. If the nematode goes within that loop, that loop immediately starts flushing cytoplasm and starts enlarging, suffocating that nematode. <clears throat> and then as the nematode dies, then it, it just preys on the dead uh, nematode. And that's the predatory type of uh, feeding. The growth conditions of uh, fungi, they're not as diverse as in bacteria. They're usually mesophiles between 0 to 35. Their optimum temperature is between 20 to 30. Most, most fungi, they prefer acidic conditions between 4 to 7. 6 is the optimum, so they're slightly acidophilic. Uh, their importance in the soil and the ecosystem, it comes from their ability to degrade, their active ecosystem, their active degraders. They could be agents of disease, that's right but they can also be beneficial symbiosis between them and other uh, organisms. What we have learned that soil formation, also in the aggregate soil formation, depends on the role of microorganisms. Also, fungal hyphae has an important key player for just joining those uh, soil particles together and forming those aggregates. Fungi also are considered important for food source for humans and other animals. Uh, many are important for ecosystem function and vitality. And there are other metabolites and derivatives uh, uh, secreted by fungi that are often important in, in medicine and in food industries. So these are also sources coming from the fungi. Well, now we're going to talk about the taxonomy and we're going to talk about major groups of uh, fungi. And we'll start with the oomycota. The oomycetes, or the flagellated fungi, they usually characterize that they are, they could either be water, found in water environments or soil environment, but they're usually often members of this uh, family. They are highly destructive pathogens for plants, such as the pythium and the phytophthora. The pythium causes damping of seedlings, while phytophthora, such as the phytophthora infestans, causes potato blight. These pictures here show the sporangia and the structure of uh, fungi, and this is called the seedlings to damp and become welt and, and, and then dies. The phytophthora infestans, on the other hand, it causes the uh, potato leaves to uh, blighten and uh, causes some damage to the photosynthetic ability of the plant. The other, the other uh, true fungi, uh, they can call them the zygomycota. The zygomycetes, they call the sugar fungi. They can ferment a diverse wide range of carbohydrates. Many, they live uh, saprophytically and some are parasites on arthropods and other invertebrates and fungi such as mucor, which is important in alcohol and organic acid production. And we probably, everybody noticed the bread mold, the mold that grows on bread. This is the rhizopus solonificans. So they're called the sugar fungi or the zygomycotes. The second genera for the true fungi, they uh, belong to uh, they're the glomerulomycota. They're characterized that they can form an arbuscule, as you see here in the picture, they can form a large arbuscules. 
uh, to store um, energy and uh, they form arbuscular mycorrhizae. They can do uh, glomelin, they can produce glomelin and this is a glycoprotein that is very important in, in gluing and uh, uh, soil particles together so they are important in soil aggregate formation and be since they belong to arbuscular mycorrhizae they can form symbiosis with at least 70 percent of all terrestrial plants the genera that belongs to uh, glomerulomycotes are the gigaspora and the glomus another third one is the ascomycota Ascomycota, they live saprophytically, is that they mean they rely on dead material to obtain their carbon. Some are parasitic on plants and some are mutualistic, they're symbiotic. They can form ectomycorrhizae and, and perhaps associations with lichens, such as the Aspergillus, Penicillium, Fusarium, and the Saccharomyces. Well, I want you to note that asparagus, for example, they produce secondary metabolites that are perhaps not that useful. They're well known for their aflatoxins. Aflatoxins, these are toxins released from uh, this kind of genera, from asparagus, for example, that they can cause uh, um, disease if we eat any uh, fruits and or uh, or any uh, food products that has uh, a growth of aspergillus even though we can release we can take off all the uh, the fungus but the toxins could still uh, be in the food and then causes uh, disease and illnesses the other uh, one is penicillium but in, in this case the penicillium here secretes a very useful product it's called the uh, um, Penicillin that was first discovered as an antibiotic. Fusarium is another species, while some of them they are plant pathogens. And the Saccharomyces, Saccharomyces cervatia, for example, they reproduce by budding, and it is called in, in the home as yeast. The Basidiomycotes are the last in the uh, gen, uh, families here. They are the mushrooms. They are, uh, they're known for ability to decompose woody tissue. Most of them, they are either the brown rot fungi or the white rot fungus. The brown rots, they are known for their ability to degrade cellulose, while the white rot fungi, they are known to degrade lignin, lignin degraders. Some they can cause several plant diseases and others are symbiotic ectomycorrhizae. Examples are agaricus and the pleurotus and the amanita. Here again, Amanita can produce a very toxic uh, uh, materials. They're very toxic. They can kill humans. So these are the major, uh, uh, you know, families of uh, fungi, of true fungi, that we can often rely on their structural diversity for uh, classification. Thank you very much.